the number you have dialed. It's a drum show. I don't know what my job is for us, and this is my friend, Kenny. Hi. Today I will have a special topic which is about scholarship. Every student having scholarship, they are dream to have a scholarship. Actually, Alpha is quite famous in Indonesia. Aya Satya Henga, BA. Hans MSc is an LNG and LPG specialist in SKK Amigas and a member of the organization formulation team of SKK Amigas. The president of the Michigan State University Alumni Association, co-founder and advisor of the Indonesian Energy and Environmental Institute. Chairman of the Energy and Mineral Resources Division of Ruma Millennials and advisor to the Indonesian Alumni from Abroad Association, a Jakarta Intercultural School brand ambassador and alumni. A coordinator for the Greater Jakarta Bantan and West Java region for Indonesia's network of climate change and forestry experts and an advisor to Maridi Muda Nusantara. Henga attained a Master of Science degree in Energy and Environmental Policy, magna cum laude, from New York University. His study was fully funded by the Indonesian Ministry of Finance. Henga also holds a bachelor's degree in economics from Michigan State University where he was a member of the Honors College. As an undergraduate student, Henga completed coursework at Harvard University in the University of California, Los Angeles. Throughout his life, Henga has lived in five countries and traveled to over 40 countries. Please welcome Mr. Satya Henga. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining in the Brom show and you will talk about you know your experience, scholarship and you are such an Indonesian pride, Misha. And also this is Kenny, my friend. Hi Mr. Satya. Hi. Hi Kenny, how are you? It's good, he's good, you know. He's really look up to you as well. That's great. Uh, we have scholarship recipients in 34 provinces in Indonesia, right? So in every single province. Uh, most people actually pursue their degree in the country. So 68.1% is in the country, 31.9% is uh, out of the country. And if you uh, look at the uh, you know stats and also the data uh, that are out there, uh, I mean, a large majority of the people pursuing their PhD uh, are actually pursuing it in Indonesia rather than abroad. Whereas for their masters, uh, there's more people abroad, but the difference is not uh, that much, you know, compared to people who uh, decided to uh, really uh, pursue their degree uh, within the country, you know? And so we have a balance of, you know, both uh, within the country as well as out, out of the country. And, uh, you know, as a whole, we have people coming from all walks of life, people of different passions and, and disciplines and people working in the government, the public sector and the private sector and state-owned enterprises, being entrepreneurs or, you know, working at the university level or maybe even having their own organizations, you know. And so uh, we have a diverse uh, group of individuals. I mean, we have over 30,000, right? Uh, we have tens of thousands of people. Uh, and we're scattered across, you know, 36 different countries. I received the LPDB scholarship in 2015. So it was, you know, you know a little over um, uh, almost, you know, seven years ago. Uh, it was by the end of 2015. And, um, you know, at, at that time, you know, I, I have just graduated from my bachelor's degree from Michigan State University. I was at MSU for a total of uh, three years. I was able to graduate in three years because I took classes at Harvard and UCLA. I spent one semester in each of the um, university, and then I also transferred uh, credits from the uh, Jakarta International School uh, because I took advanced placement AP as well as the International Baccalaureate IB. And because I was able to get decent grades, uh, I was able to transfer those credits to MSU. I transferred credits from uh, Harvard and UCLA, and uh, you know, cumulatively, I was able uh, to really rack up, you know. Uh, credits uh, of a total of uh, one year. And so that's the reason why I was able to graduate in three years. So I graduated in three years. And then at that time, I was still very, very young. I'm still young now, but I was even younger back then. And so I decided to 
you know, you know what? I, I want to just go straight to my master's. So I applied to a few universities. I got accepted to the uh, New York University, NYU, as well as Boston University, uh, BU, and then also a few other uh, universities I got accepted to. And because I feel I felt as though, you know, I graduated from my bachelor's degree, I have a college degree. And so I didn't want to put a burden on my parents, you know, and so I, I, I decided to look for scholarships to be able to, you know, fully fund my own education. And that's when I came across LPDP. That's when I came across, you know, the Ministry of Finance's website and the scholarship that they offer you know i applied uh you know of course um I, after i got the letter of acceptance so i applied to different universities first took the gre i submitted my essays letter of recommendation the um, application i was able to receive a few letter of acceptance and then i played for the lpdb scholarship even though the LOA is not a requirement to apply for the LPDB scholarship, but that actually gave me an edge, it gave me an advantage to be able to, re to receive the scholarship you know, in comparison to all of my other peers. You know, it, it really did help. And some of the tips and tricks that I would, I would, uh, I would tell you know, the audience and tell the people that are interested in LPDB is one, stay true to yourself, to your identity, to who you are and what you believe in your principles. But always remember that no matter where you want to pursue your education, always remember your home country and always know how you want to contribute because that is the question that they will be asking okay we're funding your education be it within the country or abroad and what will you be doing once you graduate where will you be working or what kind of startup will you will you uh, try to initiate you know to be able to really give back to indonesia and so those are uh, the, the the tips and tricks that you know i would you know tell aspiring you know applicants to receive the lpdp uh, in a scholarship. And it's a great scholarship. Uh, it's really very generous. I mean, they pay for everything uh, in terms of your education, in terms of your living allowance, your tuition fee, everything's fully funded. And there is no commitment in any way, shape or form besides the fact that within 30 days, you know, after you graduate uh, from your university, you're expected to go back to Indonesia. That is the only requirement, which isn't very stringent. You know, you just have to come back to Indonesia and then you have to work here for a minimum of five years. And then after that, you're free. And you, you also contribute yourself to Indonesia, becoming work in energy and environmental. And also you as a founder, co-founder and advisor, uh, for Indonesian Energy and Environmental Institute. Can you explain to us what is that and what's the function and what's your goals? Yeah, so I became co-founder of IE2I, uh, which stands for the Indonesian Energy and Environmental Institute ever since I graduated from my bachelor's degree. So I went to Michigan State University where I received a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. I was a member of the Honors College. Uh, and then, uh, you know, after after a year into my master's degree program, where I uh, I got my master's from NYU, New York University, Master of Science in Energy and Environmental Policy with Magna Cum Laude. Uh, and of course, I was a scholarship recipient in 2015. So it was uh, uh, halfway through my master's degree program in 2016 that I decided to really establish a an organization that focuses on energy and the environment. Because we do realize that Indonesia is a country that is heavily dependent on fossil fuels. I mean, fossil fuels it really accelerates our economy, right? And it contributes to, to, to our state revenue, you know? And so uh, we are rich in fossil fuels. Um, and, uh, you know, if you look at the future, I mean, we're still very much dependent. But by the end of the day, it releases a lot of neg negative externalities. It contributes to global warming and its negative consequences, which is climate change. And so I thought to myself, this is not sustainable. And so we have to be able... Uh, to ensure sustainability in Indonesia, we have to be able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, there are so many sectors that contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, right? Uh, but I think the primary sector uh, is the land use, land use change and forestry, but also the energy sector, which is set to overtake the forestry sector. If you look at the world as a whole, 75% of our global greenhouse gas emissions come from the energy sector, right? Uh, whereas the other 25% comes from other sectors, right? And so, in Indonesia, um, the energy sector is, is, is large, you know, and, and so th that's the reason why I decided uh, to really uh, establish an organization that can focus on tackling global warming, climate change through the energy sector. So uh, we have research, you know, policy advocacy training, as well as education, uh, and then we host, you know, different activities. We have a memorandum of understanding as well with the Ministry of Forestry and Environment. Uh, we, you know, we collaborate with one another and it falls in line with my passion and what I believe in uh, and also uh, in trying to do what's best, you know, for Indonesia uh, going forward when it comes to the energy as well as uh, the uh, environmental sector. 
that's awesome. You know, and do you have something advice or tips to a uh, young generation who want to follow your footsteps? Like as an secretary general Mata Garuda, you may know that what is the common mistake that students apply for LPDP scholarship and then, you know, how to be stand out in a top university and also make like an NGO or advocacy to your contribution to Indonesia. Yeah, so you know, Indonesia is, is a country that has big potential. Uh, I mean, not just potential in terms of our natural resources uh, or our economic activity, you know, but potential in our human resources. I mean, we are a country that has, we've, we almost have 280 million people. We're the fourth largest country in the world in terms of population. We have 17,500 islands, 34 different provinces. Now, and so we are rich in human resource. A large majority of our population uh, is actually uh, the youth. You know, So when I say youth, I mean millennials, uh, I mean Generation Z, I mean uh, Generation Alpha. Uh, a large majority of them are, are, are youngins. You know? And so we will reach our peak in 2030, uh, and then we'll start to decline in 2035 in terms of our, uh, the youth population. So we have to be able to maximize our uh, bonus demography, you know, and so our demographic dividend. And so it's important for uh, the government to be able to, to, to give opportunities in terms of work, uh, in terms of, you know, career, uh, in terms of, you know, scholarships, being able to pursue higher le levels of education. But, you know, by the end of the day, uh, you know, I think it comes down to us whether or not we want to succeed. So if we have that uh, aspiration to succeed, we have that will, that drive, that determination, we can become someone, we can become successful, and we're able to achieve our vision and mission. For us to be able to get the LPDB scholarship, stay true to yourself, your identity, who you are, and know how you want to contribute to Indonesia. You know, that is how you should uh, really have in mind before you apply for the LPDP you know, scholarship. And, you know, the uh, advice that I can give to the young generation is to always stay optimistic, always stay positive, stay true to yourself, know your passion, your area of expertise, and know how you want to contribute to Indonesia. And be open-minded. You have to be able to adapt and adjust. And don't only focus on your hard skills, what you learn in the classroom, but also your soft skills. I cannot stress how important it is to enhance your soft skills. Enhancing our soft skills can come from organizations. It can come from you know having your own company. It can come from working at a company or in the, in the government, building your social skills, building your networks, because that is what is important. Your skill and knowledge, right, in terms of hard skills is very important, uh, but it's even more important to have, you know, soft skills, being able to have that empathy, being able to, ha to handle your emotions well, being able to, to, to really, uh, you know, instill among people your point of view, you know, and being a good listener as well. So not just being a good communicator, but also being a good listener. I think those are the skills that are vital for you to be able to, you know, succeed, uh, you know, in this life and be able to achieve your uh, uh, vision and mission. Uh, that's great. And you know how to start it like how to start to apply and everything like everything will be easy if we know how to start something like is it hard time to start and maybe like so many students do not know how to start to be in successful yeah in order for us to start um, we'll have to start as soon as possible, you know, and if you want to start, it has to come from yourself, but it has to come from within. You can listen to a lot of lectures, you can listen to a lot of webinars, you can also watch a lot of YouTube videos or go on social media, but it has to come from you, you know, and the, the sooner the better, uh, because the sooner you want to improve yourself, uh, and the sooner it is that you want to succeed, then, then the faster you are at improving yourself, you know, and take it one step at a time. You won't be able to improve exponentially, drastically, but every day is a step forward, you know? And so that's what you should have in mind. And being able to, to, to really instill that within you, being able to contribute is, is already a big deal in itself. And you're able to actualize your potential through organizations, through the company that you've established or the companies by working for someone, by interning, by going to school, by getting involved in organizations. There are so many ways for you to be able to realize your you know, potential and for you to be able to become the greatest version you know, of yourself. That's it? Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Satya, for joining, My pleasure. For joining Bloom Show Worldwide Inspirational. You, know, you give us such an inspiration, motivation, and whole stepping stone to you know to become successful and 
I wish you good luck for everything and I wish you the best and for you guys hope you enjoy the show and get insightful and benefit for, from this show and goodbye and see you to the next show bye so much everyone and please always tune in to the Brahm show